I think there's going to be some time for mistakes and facility to try to ingrate themselves into this roster because they haven't been playing for a bit, right? Mm -hmm. So just like yeah. some of the boys on Revival, they got to get into the grind once again, being able to play with the team and get into the habits that they used to have that might have taken a little bit of vaccine as they're adjusting post you know, Overwatch League and post their last team. And Montreal second win are going to be starting off here. And we've got a Farah in the air with Desire on its second win on the other side. Look at this. We've got Snex on Junkrat. Yeah, this is certainly unorthodox. Okay, so unorthodox. Montreal is going to take all of the time to get back to spawn and swap the stakes onto the Tracer and Smex onto the Sombra. So these are two heroes that they've been playing. Uh, they played last week as well. And as we all know, this triple DPS look with Jake Haru on the ball is very strong in the meta currently. Gives you a lot of options to attack, a lot of great ways to surround your enemies while staying mobile. Does not offer a ton of point, uh, point pressure though. So second win with the superior positioning, we'll take that first. Man, we just saw it actually. Krill, really, I think, hit six or seven shots in a row, but unfortunately, because you're playing Anish, you're not gonna get those one shot, one kills. Those body shots are definitely gonna keep Montreal from trying to approach the point because none of them can be healthy if Ash is continuously peppering and damage into you in the sky on the ground as Jake Haru is going to get hacked. And Montreal actually flips the point. Not a ton of presence for either side here to keep the point. Yeah, no, so as Hello. easily as they lost it, they Looks like they're about to retake this Montreal Rebellion working hard, but they're losing members. Will coming in, get the headshot kill onto Tenzin. That's going to cut off most of the sustained healing from Montreal Rebellion. Oh, deciding to go with the Pulse Bomb in instead of potentially a one flip there. This thing trying to be a little bit fancy, but in the end, Montreal still going to lose a member and have to try to come back onto this point once more. Yeah, and this is the tough thing with all of these squirrely heroes here. It really does come down to just individual mechanics. A single player can turn the tides if you start getting on that hot streak with your Ash, with your Farah. And Second Wind have plenty of tools to continue to push this over the halfway point as Montreal Rebellion is still looking for that initiating ultimate. It's going to be the Nano. Yeah, we see Spec trying to get some things going on in the back. And Line has to translocate away after Phil Pressure is out after getting the health pack. Second Wind, Redlock is purpled and is taken low. So the heal it's not going to be available for him, and it's going to be unable to use the ultimate in the end as well. So Montreal has an opening. They've got a 6v4 right now. Is Vizility going to get another pick for Montreal? Yeah, the only question here is can second win make up for the difference? Doesn't look likely. As a quick sleep and a dome from Vizility will spell doom for a second win. And Montreal Rebellion biting back here. And it kind of has been shown to be that Shredlock is kind of the sacrificial tank, right? Holding down the ground. And even if he dies, it's a long time before Montreal Rebellion can find enough picks to actually flip the point safely. So if Second Wind keep playing this way, they still have plenty of ultimates. They find picks here and there, especially crucial ones like this Mercy. They're going to be able to recap this quickly. Am Tornado, I miss these fair of what, you know, Battles into the air so much but on the ground. The stakes is making people hurt. Two kills coming in for mistakes from Montreal Rebellion. Second win's gonna get wiped. Love this mistake. Certainly having a bit of a cold streak last week has warmed up really well on this tracer and doing great work. Yeah, he's being that cleanup hero, right? Anytime you just need a pepper in the last couple of bits of damage, he's your man. And second win actually gonna swap Frill onto his own tracer, if nothing else, at least to keep mistakes in check. Who has been running free this whole time. Yeah, we're entering late game scenarios here. So every switch, every pick becomes more and more important. He's really gonna get two of his own and keep Montreal on at this objective, leading them into that one fight territory. Oh, the hack don't even matter. Facility, a bird of prey in the sky right now. His far is absolutely amazing. Just last week, he got that incredible 4K on Busan. He's looking for the barrage now. Might need to save it for some kind of overtime last burst of damage because Frill working on flipping this point out from underneath Montreal's nose. Well, what that's going to do is the attempt here was to bring Montreal onto the point, but no one's even going to be able to worry about it because Montreal getting so many picks before they even have to get to the objective. Second win, followed by the wayside. They're already at 99%. Overtime wick is over. First round win for Montreal. Yeah, despite a good, a pretty good early start, second win just not really able to hang in those 1v1s. Montreal, even though their start was slower, they were getting so much more value for each of those DPS heroes. It felt like, you know, every time Vizility dropped down from the sky, he was able to two-shot a squishy, and that's just so hard to play against. You either have to be, you know, producing at the same rate with your own offense, or you have to be able to skirt around, just dance around, wasting that far as time. And unfortunately, second win, not really able to do either.
Yeah, it was pretty back and forth at the beginning as the, you know, both teams got some percentages, but in the end, Montreal were able to kind of strangle them out of at the point just because of, I think, some greater mechanical skill coming out from Montreal. Visibility in the air was doing much more work than Desire was on a second win, so second win needs to produce even more than they already have if they want to continue against Montreal at this point because the stakes and visibility are no longer warming up. They are killing it and taking names right now as they're going to open this up so early on with the pick and eating the res second wind does to bring them up and Earl's going to take advantage of that and actually take the bird out of the air but the res is going to happen there now we've just got trades going on so is going to find another nice four kill but once Ooh. more this has been happening contenders which has been so fun trades on trades it's no longer 63s that we're seeing like we saw in the goats it's 66 and then 5v5s 4v4s and right now montreal owns the point after some pretty great skirmishes but second wind still isn't out of this as Iyer is not going to test his luck again against Mistakes as Widowmaker, he swaps onto the Tracer, although Mistakes also going to swap onto his own Tracer here, so there is no bird of prey in the sky anymore for second win. Montreal Rebellion owned the point here. Second win needs to make a difficult engagement onto the point. Barbie able to find his counterpart here, so that's one member down, but four still live, and each one of them with so much mobility. Well, and that pick is actually really important because not only does it keep Snex from getting to EMP, it lets Barbie catch up to his own EMP as well as we're going to see some ultimates come out as the Valkyrie from Hello and Halo not going to be enough to save Exorath from certain doom, but both Anis find themselves back at spot. We do see these reses coming out. Mistakes pops the head of Thrill, tends to have to invest in res as well, and they actually flip the point second wind does as the skirmishes happen around it. Now we're going to see the wrecking balls come in through, try to take some of the field away with those proximity mines, which second wind did it do? Jake Haru's gonna have to go back to spot, and right now we're just seeing these 1v1 skirmishes between the mirrors on the other side. Oh man, once Tracer comes back into your game, your control is gonna become even more scrappy than it used to be. Jake Haru's ball so incredibly impressive. He had so many pile drive kills just last week and showing up again, but here we have it, Montreal Rebellion, even though they took two losses to second wins one, they still prioritize the point and able to flip it again. This is all three point percentage for Montreal. Yeah, I feel like this fight has been happening ever since that first gap. And so that we're here at 55 versus 25, and we're still seeing these trades. And the reason why we're seeing these skirmishes so much is because not, no one is dying all at once. And I think they'll maintain a little sense of balance during these fights, which has been making it pretty exciting. His mistakes are so very low, and he does get taken down in the end by Frill. Smex also going to be taking down second win, finally turning the tide in terms of momentum onto what they need. They need their second win right now because Montreal Rebellion are approaching that one fight territory. Are they going to be able to flip it at 80%? That's going to give them a little bit more leeway. And it's in these crunch times where you can really start to see players pop off. Are you going to be a hero or a zero? Desire definitely being a hero for second wind in that last fight, covering in so much damage here, able to confirm those kills. And now Montreal Rebellion, they only need one more one fight. And with the way that they've been able to prioritize the objective in the couple of last skirmishes, this does bode well. Second wind have to remember that about the point. If they take too many bodies off, Montreal Rebellion flip this, and Second Wind's gonna spend all of that time just picking off enough kills to get point pressure again. And you would think that that advice would fall on WSU, because yeah, the objective is the objective. That's what's called for a reason, but we've seen a lot of letter number shenanigans. The point has been forgotten by plenty of teams so far here in Contenders as we continue these trades. The reses are going to be invested. Skrill's going to have another chance to make some damage with that Widow's Kiss. So second win also functioning with some good ultimate Skrill with the vision is definitely going to help out second win because they're going to know where Spex is potentially coming in with that EMP. It's not going to not gonna have to worry about it that much if you're dead though. Yeah, Frill show he doesn't even need those wall hacks. Two shots, two kills, and Montreal Rebellion running out of precious time here. Second win has basically evened up things here on Shrine. Montreal, they have an EMP. They gotta catch a bunch of valuable members though. We're talking about those backline supports, which is easier said than done. Knowing where the Sombra is at 95% with these wall hacks is so very important. Is Desire going to start things off with the kill? So, second win have a 65, and they control the point. The EMP is going to come out from Barbie at first. Smex is not able to find any value out of his EMP. That's going to put Montreal behind for the rest of this fight. They're going to need some miracle picks. Actually, they flip the point. That's going to buy them that time to potentially grab the rest of the team that's back. But it's going to take some fast legs. you got to sprint back. And Vizility getting this pick is definitely going to help Montreal's cause. 
They did it. They did not remember the objective, They man. did not. They forgot it in the most crucial milliseconds of this point. And now Vizility with, on the Soldier 76 with that extra little bit of sustainability is going to be able to dance around those objectives so well. And Montreal just seconds away from taking this entire Nepal map. This is going to be a tough one uh, to take if you're second wind. Losing the objective during a skirmish like that at 95% into, you know, overtime, in my opinion, is a pretty large mistake. So now that they're going up, you know, and going into these next maps, making something as egregious as that, I know there is a lot to say about not having that play presence, but they were able to flip it because Montreal didn't care about that. I, I mean, yeah, and no point presence. Montreal was running essentially the same comp, you know, minus one Fara. so no excuses here for second win. They needed to wake up on Village. They started warming up on Shrine, but you can't take your eyes off of the point. All of those amazing headshots, all of those amazing hacks, not going to be doing anything if you lose the objective. And Montreal, in the end, and able to win things out. We got to give credit to the DPS players of Montreal Rebellion Mistake and Facility because just like Bishu, Bishu needed a day mm -hmm. or like a week to warm up, yep. and so did Mistake and Facility. But today, Facility in the air, that bird of prey was definitely feasting on some meat on a second win. But the other thing about it is they were a big reason why they were able to flip that point. That 76 in the end was there for that desperation sprint to the point, mm -hmm. but in the end was able to find that initial pick, which delayed second win long enough for Montreal Rebellion to come back in with the Yeah, and Soldier 76 is such a great last ditch pick when you need to hold down a point. He can bunker down. He doesn't spray out a ton of damage, but it's extremely consistent. And that biofield can help keep the rest of your teammates alive on the point as you dance around. And so all in all, Montreal Rebellion coming out with the right heroes at the right time. Eventually, they did swap Facility off of the Farah despite his incredible earlier streak. But, you know, hey, like, Farah is one of those heroes that you don't get as much value from in those last second moments. So, all around, not bad. Yeah, unless you have that barrage at the ready, that's when you kind of are okay with Farah at these late stage moments. But. You also sometimes, I'm going to bring this up, that check mark can force you onto a certain team comp, so I like the heads up nature of Montreal being okay with switching off just in case, and it ended up being the right choice for them as Montreal go up 1-0 against a second wind and controls an opportunity that in the past was uh, a time for underdogs to come out and to show a little bit of their mettle because, you know, the, the consistent strategies for control sometimes just evolve after all those picks. We actually yeah. saw it here a couple times with all of those trades and the tracers going after each other. So second win, in my opinion, loses a little bit of an opportunity to try to pick off a map type from a Montreal Rebellion going into our next map type, which is Assault. So depending on what this is, it's going to be Paris. Uh, for Montreal, Paris has been a nice boon to their Assault map win percentage. They are undefeated on it so far, 1-0, and zero, but their overall Assault win percentage is 33%. Mm. So this is actually really good news if you're a Montreal fan. Yeah, I mean, Montreal can certainly bring things back on this specific map. Second win has a higher overall assault win percentage, but they have lost the one time that they've played Paris. And Paris is a very unique map, even amongst assaults. This first point, extremely squirrely to get around. It can be very difficult to, well, assault. And you need a set strategy and your whole team needs to stick to it. And that synergy, teamwork, and communication is where a lot of teams have tripped up in the past. So second win, going to have their first bite at the apple on the attack here. Montreal Rebellion deciding to go with a bunker composition. Triple DPS mistakes on the Widowmaker facility taken to the skies. I would definitely keep this guy on the far if at all possible. And Smex picking up the Junkrat, a hero that we don't see that often anymore, known as a tank buster. So good at breaking those shields and chunking down those tanks. But you do need tanks to bust in order to bring yourself up to that rip tire very quickly and it's paying off 25 percent already for smex and second win you know kind of playing into montreal's hands here by running barbecue on this roadhog well not only that is smex also takes away area from the other side right that's what you know tactical area denial is what we used to say about junkrat and our it's yeah, not spam <laughs> tactical area and spam i guess is 55 percent shows us that it's working and on a map like Paris, there's already not a ton of area 
to work with. So he's just really hemorrhaging second wind's opportunities oh, to sleep. actually make anything happen. But a sleep will turn things around when there's no facility to worry about, when there's no Jake Hari to worry about. Second wind can mosey on in through this initial choke. So now it's all up to Mach Shower. I'm to say, how hard are we going to hold on to the first plan? Because it's gonna be difficult. Oh, here we have it. Mistakes. The last man standing, not able to pull off a logics this time around and single-handedly turn this point around. And what could have been a huge disadvantage, barbecue being that big piggy alt battery, turns out to be, you know, not that big of a disadvantage for second win at all because everybody else on Montreal fell so quickly around him. Are we gonna swap heroes as he saunters his way into spawn. Montreal gonna hold on to this tire for now. Always really good to have that just in case ultimate when you're swapping from that point A to point B defense. Second win have all the time in the world. And this is kind of one of the scary things when you're running against two snipers. I mean, it's only a matter of time essentially before Frill and Azire find those necessary picks. When you're running uh, the, that triple DPS, very squishy heroes. If Jake Haru's single shield falls, then that's a free line of sight for both Azire and Frill. Treadlock is sleeping on the ground with a tire at the ready. He's oh. going to be taken down from its next, using it right away. So the question here is how long is he going to stay on the Junkrat? Not for long, as they are going to invest the rest. So all kills coming in from that Montreal will be permanent. Second win, still losing those members. Hello, I'm Halo going down. Now they don't have any support. It's going to be very, very hard for second win to maintain any sort of assault on it this second win. Yep. And, oh no, poor Shredlocks. He's taking a nap at the very worst moment. Oh, oh Barbie, okie dokie. You know, just, that's just for the feel good. It's always that's a, good. That's a Lewis power play if I've <laughs> exactly, ever seen Exactly, Lewis one myself. Power! Yeah, so, well, that's Jay Karu, but Lewis Power is a great name. Mm -hmm. Second wind, Barbie, Desire, Shredlock, Ultimates, Montreal Rebellion. We've got Jay Karu, Lewis Power, and Atensa <laughs> at their Ultimates as well. Dragon Strike is going to take away even more of that area, so Montreal Rebellion can just kind of sit pretty behind the shield and wait for these ult pits to come through. They can force Second Wind to come into the bunker, and they have switched over to the Trident and True with just an Anna. Yep, goats for Second Wind going for that consistency and that point pressure. I need to literally just barrel onto the point, and it's up to Montreal to force you back, and man alive, Exorath has been working overtime so far. Two sleeps onto the Squirrely Vizility. Unfortunately, this time around no long range damage so they can't confirm that kill but they definitely gonna make him think twice about peeking like that yeah mr power has provided power to the rest of his team during that engagement with that supercharger now it's just tensa with the valkyrie second win have been given a little bit of time to get up to some of their ultimates but the only one really doing it so far is barbie so they can't really do anything for the moment unless they really want to try to pull the trigger with Exorath and this mana. Shredlock is on it. The Grand Visility is already covering a ton of damage with these rockets. He's either taken pretty low. They're going to go ahead and try this thing with that. And Nano, Shredlock's going to have to make some noise. That he does, taking Jakaru in the end, but it's still a 5 v 5 arc. He's probably going to get D-Bank, but no, he's going to drop that self-destruct. Tensa did get the red lock onto his Arisa. So Vachar Rebellion still are functioning with all six members. The Rocket Barrage not going to do anything. Good shielding coming in from second win. Hello, I'm Halo Inspector. Going to be trading kills, but Montreal Rebellion are now getting that numbers advantage. Dreadlock sleeping on the ground is a big reason why second win is this game. Uh, so unlucky there. Otherwise, second win might have been able to get the jump with that early nano from x -Rath. Oh, Barbie again. Getting so many revenge kills, but unfortunately, those don't count towards capturing the point on Assault. I mean, second wind, you know, they came right in here, and this is actually a pretty viable comp to run against Orisa-type defenses. You speed boost in, you get right on top of the Orisa and hammer into smithereens, and then pick off the rest of the comp. However, Montreal has been doing so well to damage second wind before they even get close to the Montreal tank that they're not healthy enough in order to fight at full Dragon Strike goes straight through second and win. That was almost a matrix, actually, but it does end up going through Barbie, though. Gonna get the bird out of the sky. Are they gonna be able to get that rest? Smex could be covering it with that self-destruct, but no. Visility, Smex, and the snakes are all going back to spot. Is Barbie gonna get more melee kills than Negaji does? Torp Hammer kills, pretty much. Second win should be capturing this point with about two minutes and 20 seconds, 26 seconds left. Montreal Rebellion are going to have to try to match that on their attack. There we go. That's how you run goats against a bunker. Very nice. Because 
when you're going with the uh, the pincushion type defense, right? The hedgehog, you bunker down and you're too pointy. Try to make yourself too pointy for the attackers <laughs> to assault, right? Well, you have to be too pointy. And second wind this time around, they're like, hey, it's okay. This time around, we ran into the porcupine's quills. But this time, we're prepared. You force the Arisa to drop onto the low ground, and that's half the battle won. Montreal this time around, not able to get the same kind of production out of the Farah to hold second wind back. And Vasility, you know, it's what, what, you know, what do you think of when you think of a great Farah, right? It's not just your ability to hit those directs to predict really well. Uh, Vasility hits a zillion mid-air directs it feels every single match and his target prioritization is on point hello pidgeys uh hero number 30 you never know it's the league it's the league uh but you know his, his ability to put pressure on the back line you saw every single time that he was firing those rockets while second wind was you know kind of mailing on the point he was targeting exorath one of the most vulnerable members to the far with that on it in the back line and so it's not just about landing your shots but who you're shooting at that has made montreal's dps comp so formidable that mother daughter skirmish can be a little interesting as well because all the anna needs to do is land that sleep like yep, that's all right <laughs> like it's easy right i but mean he's actually done it twice yeah we right? saw it happen twice so far so if anna's able to clip the you know the wings of the bird to the sky then that there is just out of the fight but you are gonna be taking rockets at the seam at times so it's one of my favorite 1v1s one that you can see his facility is going to take the skies a one once again on this fair, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But this time around, you've got to try to make a little bit more oh. out of your money. Is Frill going to get an amazing <laughs> headshot onto Tensa? He's like, I hear you guys talk about Montreal. We got some DPS on second win, too. How did you talk about that? You absolutely have to respect the skills oh. of Frill and yikes. Oh, that just can't happen, man. I mean, I know these days Widowmaker's just now coming back into style, but this is such an amazing spot. Pro can't be the only Widowmaker who knows about this. It's just a testament to his skill that he's able to land those two shots in a row. Well, I think one might have changed the game a little bit last week after that Widowmaker performance. It probably makes everyone else, you know, Widowmaker was already coming into the meta. She was pretty much there, but after one's performance, she is here to stay. You can run this Widowmaker and change the dynamics of each fight with just one headshot. As the Saints have translocated away, there are going to be trades going on each side. It's Byers Turret going to find Vizility, but it's three versus three right now. Smex going down, two versus three. Smex might also get DMX, so this is going to turn into a 2v2. Let's see how this one is shaped out in at the end, and it's going to be Exoref going to be taken down by Mistakes, who's so close to that EMP. Yeah, mistakes showing his flexibility here, picking up the Sombra to help his teammate Vizility here. EMP into Nano Blade is almost a surefire team fight winner. Second win trying for the clockwork defense, but unfortunately again, they just weren't able to hold strong enough before Montreal closed the distance. And that's the key against any stationary defense. Well, it was actually pretty of that with those trees, the attacking team's gonna get a little bit of a jump on at the point, but that's not gonna matter to Barbie as he is going to get that kill. Yep, Goliath down means that Montreal without that sustained healing tends to only in with a little bit of tickle kills. However, it's not gonna matter if there aren't any bodies to hold this point any longer. Phil desperately trying to find a pick, help his team even up things up, but it's been little coming. I don't believe the EMP hit anybody there. So Montreal Rebellion gonna get a zero for six on that EMP to see if try one more time. Maybe, you know, Sombra's coming back in and they're choosing to get their DPS player on the Sombra because maybe Smex doesn't dark. have that look. And the Divas do have to be the most flexible person on your team. Not only are you running Sombra, you're also potentially running Farah if you're one of those teams and the maze we see Barbie doing on the other side. And this is going to be a huge fight coming up on this first objective. Uh, Looking at these ultimate second win might have six online by the time this goes through. The Montreal Rebellion are just waiting for this nano blade because with a minute and 18 seconds left, this is everything that they can use. They have to put all their eggs in this basket as x is going to start things off. Barbie, though, going to get Switch Strike back to spawn. This not even needing the Dragon Blade. Now let's see if they're going to invest it anyway. The Deflex has already been there. He's saving it for now. Frill though going to take him out. So they're not going to be able to use what they've been waiting to use the whole time. But at least I can do a little bit of a reprieve by sending them back to spawn so early. But the ultimates were utilized for Montreal. They did not get the Nano off anyway. 
So Vizilidi going to have to do this the old-fashioned way, just a regular old Dragon Blade. Yeah, and Smack's taking a bath right there. Really interesting timing. I suppose Goliath decided to try and use the Nano to open things up, threw it onto Jakaru, who is primal raging as a Winston, rather than using it with Vizilidi. I mean, mistakes as EMP is going to be up in a second, so that could be a great combo with the Dragon Blade, but still really interesting. Now, though, when Vizilidi draws his blade, he has to be thinking about not only the mines, but Barbie's Blizzard, which can zone the Genji away from the entire point. So Montreal has to be playing around that. Well, Vizilidi and Jaykaryu are also purpled right now. Specs is sleeping, so the CC is keeping them from approaching this point, and Panic might be setting in right now through Montreal. He has to go. The May is going to take away a lot of the field, but the Dragon Blade is going to completely whip to start things off, and he is going to get that pick up to Hello and Halo. He siphons off the support from second win, so this could be a Montreal Rebellion cap unless some crazy mistakes happen. Montreal Rebellion, though, will be taking this point in in the nick of time. Second win could keep this blade from making contact. Yeah, a little bit unlucky. All of the healing eggs in one basket. No problem facility to strike them down with just a couple of sword swipes. Second win now going to swap on to Sombra Goats here to try and hold Montreal off. This is going to be a really difficult battle. Three check marks for Montreal, especially that EMP is most deadly here. And second win just trying their best to see if they can make up for some of that lost time by running their own Sombra. If nothing else, at least they need to hang toe to toe. Oh, what a beautiful stun that mistake gets away with three HP. So he's going to have to find a health pack before he comes back in. EMP, Banano is going to go on to the tank of Montreal. Vizilogy trying his best to get the CC on to second win. They actually do find an initial pick of 65, so the 3 HP might be the difference between Montreal taking this point and second win defending it. Mistake still hasn't used the EMP, maybe waiting for Jay Kari to find more picks with this Primal Rage. No need to invest all of your ultimates in this specific fight, and there's the big one. That's the EMP coming through next. It's gonna get two kills, but there is a return one on at the other side. Second win trying their best to claw this one back, but Montreal with that EMP should be good to go for at least a couple takes to see if second win are going to be able to stall this out. Yeah, it's stall is going to be the name of the game. They're so close to that EMP trap combination, EMP shatter. It's impossible. EMP goes through from second win this time around. Three members are hacked next to the big one there. He's the one with the ultimate. Goliath is going to be able to save him with that nano. So they stay in that next smartly. But the nano is not going to matter if you're going to be on it. The ground as an earth shatter comes through, gets four on the round second window losing them are still the rally coming out specs using the self-destruct is there a heal no there is not for now but you're going to be safe anyway if you're second with the remaining members so jaycara finds another pick mistake already at another emp so if all things fail he could just use it right here and right now three are hacked from second win and they should be going to spawn my rebellion will be capping this point Oh, second win trying their best to make things up in a desperation defense. That sound barrier from Hello Halo looks like it might have been their saving grace, but then Mistakes, who has been quietly farming EMP this entire time, wipes out all of those over shields, and that will be it for second win's defense. Did hold Montreal back to a pretty good time bank, though, all things considered. I wonder what the timeline looks like with I'm Mistakes thinking. using the EMP there rather than getting stunned out mm -hmm, uh, right? from that brig. Because if he uses EMP there, he probably dies, right? Very possible, very possible. And, you know, then Montreal's not going to have that tempo ult. EMP is an ultimate that gets a lot of value if you can spring it, uh, you know, on your opponents surprisingly but it is you know it's been coming more and more into vogue to use emp as kind of a get more type ultimate when you've already devolving into that mid late fight everybody's scattered you know there's a lot of chaos then you drop that emp you can really take advantage of your opponent's lack of organization but it is very difficult to pull off this time around montreal able to make it work Oh my yeah, Macho Rebellion also running Goliath in instead of Ultraviolet this time around at two, and I think it's been a little hit or miss so far as, you know, you're also putting Mistakes and Visility in onto the team as well, so there's three members still trying to get that teamwork going, but I'm liking what Montreal has put down so far, taking an overtime push on A into just a 20-second disadvantage in that tank bank, coming into our second round of attacks here on at Paris, which, you know, before the season, a lot of people said it was a defensive favorite map, but I'm pretty sure most of ours have gone extra innings so far a second win on the defense is going to be running one of your favorites hey it's clockwork and i love watching this composition but it is very finicky like in the name everything needs to be slotted in its rightful place facility whoo gonna get the heck out of dodge right now 
courtesy of a shot to the face by x Wrath, and <laughs> this is crucial. Second Wind absolutely need to weather this initial push because Second Wind really have, this composition really has no brawling ability sans this Roadhog, and Shredlock in particular very vulnerable to close range damage, so if you move that main tank first, this this comp is going to crumble in a second. Montreal is going to swap mistakes onto the Sombra. He has shown a lot better productivity with the Sombra than the Tracer, so not bad at all. Plus, you have the ultimate combo with EMP into Nano Blade. Right now, Montreal, they're going to be, you know, optimistically looking for any picks, but the name of the game is just ultimate farming. Ooh. Thrill. The best part about oh! that is that Thrill tried, uh, <laughs> actually not a Thrill, the Zillity tried to deflect the wall uh, to start things up. I don't think that's how it works. Climbing on that was pretty funny, but then after climbing the wall, the way that characters drop from the sky, they can actually be picked up pretty easily. It's one of the more predictable ways to Tensa. capture a person. And the big reason why, that's why ZD always hates when people jump during games, because your movement becomes more predictable, especially on the way down. Montreal actually taking things in their own hand, and Tensa getting a couple picks, and Facility is going to get the turret, so there's going to be a little oh bit more God. room as Exorath gets the kill onto mistakes with that melee in the nick of time. There's still 25 seconds left for a Montreal. Let's see what second win's going to be able to do if they can even come back to this point. Tenso, new batteries in the controller or something, putting his team on his back. That is how incredible that is, even 2v1. Uh, it's just so unfortunate that Exorath lost a duel to a Sombra Lucio combination, watching his teammates fall around him as they're booped into the icy depths. Uh, this is just really unfortunate because Second Wind had an opportunity to bring that defense back. And as it stands, they have no choice. The only ultimates they have are with this clockwork so they're going to give it a go. They do have the EMP along with the Nano. Jake Haru is so close to that Primal. That's the type of versatility you want with these ultimates. Jake Haru, Primal, then get Nano. Nano, they have Primal, or do everything. At the same time, whatever Montreal likes to run in this situation is now be your team on the line as well. But Frill going to get an initial pick on the end that, that cannot happen. With two seconds left, and Zyre going to be taken away part of the field as well. Going to get the DMEC. Jake Haru not going to be able to use the Primal Rage in time. EMP needs nothing. Montreal Rebellion bumble an opportunity here, but not for long. Is Vizility going to get a couple more picks? But again, the defense spawns here are going to be too strong, I believe, for Montreal to try to come back here. They're already seeing that space in overtime. Tensa is so very low, and right now, just continue overtime. This is lost for Montreal Rebellion. They were able to capture that first point, so if they keep second win from doing you know, from doing the same, they should win this map, but second win have the momentum on their side after that stop. Oh yeah, I mean, oh, poor Tenza, he was feeling so good after those amazing boo kills and taking that duel with the Roadhog, but unfortunately, Montreal could not afford that early pick. Everything just, you know, off kilter, out of system once you lose a member so early before you even get to the engagement. I think this is, you know, just a tempo kind of thing that these teams are getting more and more used to as we see DPS come back into the fold. It's that a lot of times, you know, you're not going to get to that dedicated team fight area, right? With GOATS, it was all about what do we do once we meet each other? 6v6, it's going to be a brawl. We all have the same ultimates. Yeah. One it's person just, dies, right? everyone else does. But with DPS, if you're not careful with your positioning, it's no guarantee you're going to stay alive in order to get to that team fight. So support teams to watch their positioning a lot more carefully, and so do those DPS, you know, now turned Zarya's. Once they get back onto those more squishy heroes, you really have to watch those sidelines. Well, it's not about farming energy anymore. It's about farming kills, farming those frags. And Montreal Rebellion has been able to do that, but when it, it mattered on that second point, everything just went away in terms of their communication. Things weren't lined up, and Tensa getting picked off to start things off, and then Jake Haru dying with Primal was the end of it on at the last point. But second win still needs to capture point A. They have two minutes and 18 seconds, and it's taken this long for many a team to even touch the point. So let's see what the rest of second win can do. Frill has been playing out of his mind on this Widowmaker so far. He's been outplaying the stakes on his Widow for sure so far this game, but that's honestly been one of the only positives for a second win against Montreal's. Montreal's been coming out on top a little bit more frequently, especially, uh, you know, at the tail end of a couple of the control rounds last map. Montreal Rebellion now going to be trying to get to those ultimate charges. we got Snex on at the Junkrat this time around. Jakaru going to get an initial pick on the defense. That's going to keep second win from approaching the point. Ooh, Shredlock sleeping on the job gets purple for his efforts here. And while Frill has certainly been lighting up the kill feed, the map geography does not favor attacking snipers the same way it does the defense. We have so many of these beautiful long sight lines. A second win. Oh, Shredlock sleeping again. Oh, feels
feel so bad, man. You just gotta just gotta take those siestas another time. Desire and Frill have to push out of these very narrow hallways before they can get the same kind of sight lines, which makes it a lot more difficult for Second Wind to push with this comp. And now Resurrection is forced to be used by Holo and Hill is bringing the numbers back up. Yikes, in indeed, if you're second wind right now, is Montreal is pushing a ton of damage into second wind, and not even allowing them to even get to the kiosk at this point. Yeah. Facility and Smex can make usage of these very tall buildings, these narrow sight lines. To their advantage, Smex can bounce those grenades around the corner. Facility can attack from the sky, whereas Second Wind are largely groundbound. And so they need their tank to be able to take space in order for their DPS to push up. And that has been extremely difficult for Shredlock, who has really spent most of this map sleeping. This tire could be absolutely brutal if it's going to land against anybody from a second win. Right now, it's going to do a little bit of parkour and then get taken down by Isaiah. It doesn't matter how fast you can move your arm. If you can't make contact, then it's not worth it. Pancha Rebellion, you're going to have to build up another tire, but at least they do have the supercharger. They're going to have the sights. They're going to have nano. They're going to have barrage. I'm looking at second win. It's not looking as good, especially with 15 seconds left. There are going to be more ultimates for them, but the other ones need to come eventually, particularly this dragon strike, and that's never going to come as the stake is going to get the headshot onto Azire. Visility is going to lock things up with this rocket barrage. Overtime is going to start. Second with though, missing a couple members to try to keep this going. Visility has to catch up to the rest of the team, but at least Bogdus' damage is the name of the game for Farah. And Overtime Wick should end here as Bogdus' Rebellion should be taking another map. Yeah, second wind. So unlucky here. They spent the vast majority of their two minute time bank just figuring out how to get to the point. And with only two minutes, that's not a lot of time to give. And you know, it I wanted to just point out that while that tire, you know, was you know pretty meme worthy, didn't end up getting any kills really, it bought something very valuable that Second Wind couldn't afford to give up, and that was time, mm -hmm. right? You have to hang back. You can't push forward and expose your back line if there's a tire on the route. Even if Montreal don't get a pick, they're whittling down the time bank. And Second Wind, unfortunately, I feel like the comp that they were running just already at such a big disadvantage on Paris map it specifically that they, they just had, you know, they just had such a tough time of it. Maybe they could have gone dive, you know, Genji, Sombra, Winston, the same way that Montreal did. Maybe. Maybes are always babies, though, right? right? A lot of adjustments could have been made, probably on either side, to play a cleaner game in it general. But in the end, the result will be Montreal Rebellion going up 2-0 against Second Wind. One last thing before we throw to break is, you know, while we did say mistakes was getting out dueled in that Widowmaker, when it mattered... You know, the, the DPS for Montreal Rebellion were playing better because Vizility has gotten Azire's number most of the match so far. So when you're splitting that, the Fair I think, is going to be contributing more in general when you're getting a better of the Farah on the other mm -hmm. side. So Vizility is a big reason, in my opinion, oh, yeah. why we're here on Montreal Re Rebellion up 2 to nothing. But like I said, we're going to be entering halftime here with Montreal up 2 to 0 against second win. We'll see you on the other side.